story I thought was kind of cute about a, a couple. They bought a, a, a big old house, a Victorian style house in upstate New York. And uh, yeah, it was kind of in a, a lake area. It wasn't insulated or anything like that, but um, it was a beautiful house that had been owned by two elderly sisters for decades and decades, like 50 years. And um, so, the, the, the woman worried a little bit about the lack of insulation. It was a set up for the winter weather. But the husband thought, you know, these, these old ladies lived here for, you know, 40, 50 years. If they can do it, I'm sure we can. It's fine. So well, winter came on and it was getting colder and colder. And one night it dipped below zero and there was frost on the inside of the walls. And uh, the husband decided, I'm going to call up these sisters, see what they did. You know, how did they get through? Got off the phone. He said, they went to Florida every year for 30 years. <laughs> So yeah, that's one solution. <laughs> well, I stumbled this little. I, I was thinking of uh, Linda because you know she plays the accordion sometimes. There was a guy that left his accordion uh, in his car, uh, and he forgot to lock it. And he was away. It was about a couple blocks away before he realized, oh shoot, didn't lock the car. So he runs back to his car um, to lock it, and there were three more accordions in it. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know that one was coming? No, I, saw, no. I, saw it I, I can see how it could happen. <laughs> and I didn't give it according to me. Like, yeah. All right. Well, the Florida one I just kind of thought of because Joe uh, and I just got back from a, a short vacation in Florida last week. Uh, just I uh, love going down there. And we saw so many every year. We, see, you know, when we don't go down. Well, we don't go every year, but when we do, I see different things. I'm not sure they were there before, but just didn't see them. Um, it's like we train our eyes uh, to see more. So this past time, we were in Sanibel, uh, things that we saw for the first time that um, I just got to see better this time, maybe with more experience there. Uh, the binoculars, having the binoculars made a big difference probably. Uh, spending a little more time with, with it and really looking, uh, we saw more. We saw alligators this time, three alligators lolling, you know, very still on uh, the banks of, of uh, freshwater uh, ponds, and, uh, just amazing sights to behold. Uh, we're particular bird lovers, so we saw lots of wonderful birds, the great white pelicans, uh, largest of our North American birds except for the condor. Amazing, huge, uh, you know, like a car-sized wingspan, you know, on the white pelicans down there, the roseate spoonbills. Uh, we saw tricolored and black-crowned herons, uh, yellow-crowned herons, um, and uh, we saw anhingas, which are um, amazing uh, acrobatic birds. That wasn't, I hadn't really seen that before, how acrobatic they are. They, they go in and they spear the fish. In the, in the, and then they bring it up and they toss it up in the air, and then it, they have to you know, take it so that it comes down head first so the scales slide right down. They're called <laughs> acrobats, flying and diving and tossing fish in the air. Um, and then we saw uh, the, the wonderful manatees. Maybe some of you have seen manatees on trips to Florida, which uh, you know, kind of train your eye to see a little bit. And first of all, you just see a little nose popping up uh, as they come up. And, and then maybe you might get a little glimpse of back, and then a little glimpse of this big round tail as they go back down. And you don't see the huge, huge uh, whole creature, but you see little bits of it. And you have to be patient, because you see movement in water. Um, you have to kind of learn how to, how to look. Um, so that's kind of what I, was, I, I thought about a lot when we were down there is, um, these things were all there before, but I didn't see them. I wasn't prepared to see them. Um, I wasn't really looking enough. Um, and I think that's true in our lives quite a lot as well. We're not, uh, we think we see all there is, but there's so much we're not seeing. So many more possibilities, so many more wonders, uh, so many more possibilities for us that we're just not prepared to see yet. Uh, or, or not looking un enough, or not uh, ready somehow to see. I was thinking that old idiom, or what you see is, is what, what you get. What you see is what you get, which is a very old and familiar idiom, which I guess means basically uh, no deception. There's no deception here. Whatever you see, there's, uh, that's, that's exactly what you're going to get. But there's another sort of meaning to it, uh, I think, also. Uh, the more maybe a, a little bit more spiritual read on it, which is that um, 
that what you can see is what you can get. I mean, we need to expand our capacity to see if we want to experience more. Uh, just so it's in the same way that while well, we, uh, we were in Florida, uh, we expanded our capacity to see a little more, and so we saw more and more, and we're blessed more and more by the wonders uh, uh, that we were able to see. Um, and I think it's true in life that some people can see a great many more possibilities than others. Would you agree? Some people can see more. Um, and that opens the floodgates more to more possibilities, more opportunities, more things uh, coming up in life because we're, they're ready to see them. Uh, they, they can see more. They can consider more, more things possible. Um, and I think in our own experience, we've, we've been both of those in both of those places. I know I have. It's easy to get in a place where you, you think this is all there is, kind of stuck, uh, really can't see much beyond where you are. And then there's other times where it seems like, you know, there's all kinds of possibilities in life. Um, we can be in both places, which is true. Um, I think the, the great good news is that it's really kind of unlimited how much we can see. And it's already there, just like the alligators and the manatees in the water. Um, and those amazing Anhinga acrobat birds, they were already there. I just wasn't uh, prepared to see them yet. I didn't even know about the possibilities. Um, and we can, be, we can be in that kind of place, but we can train ourselves to see better, I think. Can we learn to see better? I think so. I think we can. Uh, and it becomes particularly important when it has to do with how we see ourselves. Um, we, we need to be able to see ourselves in a more expanded way as the possibilities for us being so much vaster than we, than we sometimes imagine. Um, we need to be able to see ourselves in that way um, because of that creative spark that that divine presence is is in all of us and that makes all kinds of things possible all kinds of things possible so how do we see ourselves do we see ourselves made in the image of God that creative energy in us that makes all things possible um, are we able to see ourselves in that unlimited way this is you know, certainly at the, you know at the heart of all the great spiritual teachings that we're exposed to in life, Jesus saw everyone in that expanded way and said that was possible for everybody. He said all things were possible. He saw all the, the disenfranchised and the disregarded and the ignored uh, and the trampled on of his culture. He saw them all as precious, unique selves. Um, uh, lepers and Samaritans and, and uh, tax collectors and whoever else his culture disparaged and despised, he saw. Uh, he saw as unlimited uh, beings um, with God in them, uh, for whom all things were possible. Um, and I think that's that's the divine vision. That's that's how God sees us. So wonderful uh, Hebrew word for God. I, I think about often. Uh, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, but El Roi, El Roi, R-O-I. Um, the there were many, many Hebrew names for God, um, you know, uh, communicating different qualities or characteristics of God. And El Roi means the God who sees me, the God of seeing. Uh, I've always loved that idea. Um, and there's lots and lots of uh, scripture stories in which um, people who were not seen uh, in their culture were seen by God. Uh, it's a story about Hagar. It's the first time the word, that name for God comes up is in Genesis. And there's an Egyptian slave named Hagar who had, was abused and, and, um, and had no rights in her culture, um, didn't exist even in her culture. And she flees because of the abuse. She flees into the wilderness. But in the wilderness, God sees her and blesses her and promises her a brighter future. El Roi is how she, she speaks to him. It's, El Roi saw her, the God of seeing. So I think, you know, and whenever, and, and, and throughout the scriptures, Moses and Jacob encountering God in the wilderness used this name for God, uh, El Roi. Um, and these are people who made mistakes, uh, they, they, you know, or, or were lost, or in the wilderness. Uh, Moses had killed someone. Uh, Jacob had betrayed his brother. Didn't matter who they were or what their checkered past was like. The God of seeing uh, saw them as unique and precious and, and entitled to a brighter future. 
that's the God who sees us. And when we are seeing ourselves and one another that way, uh, we are opening up the floodgates to greater possibilities for ourselves, and we will see more. We will see more. How do we learn to see better? Um, especially if we were in a place where we're feeling kind of stuck, like we really can't see too many more possibilities than what are before us at the moment. Uh, one thing I learned from going to Florida this past time is uh, take your binoculars. Take your binoculars. And I think there's a, a, maybe a spiritual way of thinking about that. Um, uh, binoculars are all about focusing, right? Mm -hmm. And what are you focusing on? Um, in Florida, we were focused on, we want to see the wonderful wildlife. We want to see the birds. Um, and so we were, I wanted to see, you know, whatever the wildlife was in the water, in the trees, in the sky. Uh, that's my focus and looking for the wonders of the, of the natural world. Um, what are we focusing on in, in our lives? What are we training our binoculars on? Um, you've got to focus somehow um, or you're not going to see anything. It's going to stay all foggy like today. Um, so we need to kind of put on a focus a little bit. And it doesn't mean, you know, we want some particular thing. It means be open to blessings and wonders and goodness. Uh, that's what we need to keep our focus on. Um, the universe is sort of seems to be set up in such a way that where we kind of put our focus uh, is what we're likely to draw to us. And the Fox called it the law of attraction. Um, if there's just some kind of a magnetic energy. If we are looking for something, we're more likely to find it than if we're not looking for it, if we're not focused on that. Um, and it works in, in negative as well. If we are expecting to be abused or victimized, um, we're more likely to draw that to us if that's what we're looking for because that's been in us, we've seen that before, um, and so we're looking for it. Um, but we don't want only what we've seen before. We want to see new things. So to see new things, we have to really uh, make sure we've got a, a little, you know, our focus on I want to see opportunities. I want to see blessings. I want to see wonders. I want to see uh, what's, what's mine to do that I'm going to be blessed in. You know, and keep our focus in that way. We want to resist anything that blocks our vision and get it out of the way. We want to uh, we want to eliminate and say no to any messages about ourselves that are wrong, that are limiting. We want to say no to them. Um, we, we want us to be unblocked, ready to see new things, and we don't want to be trapped by old ideas about who we were, what other people might have told us we were. Um, we need to stay open in, to that, um, because there's always so many more possibilities than we can imagine. There are manatees in the water <laughs> that we're not seeing, perhaps. Uh, there are amazing uh, possibilities for us that we may not be seeing, so we want to uh, be careful that we're staying open to them. I was reminded of something I was reading lately that nowadays one of those, one of the ways that plays out for us to, you know, to resist anything that blocks our vision is that I think we have to be very careful these days about social media. It really blocks us. Uh, and I've been hearing references to the social media bubble that uh, if you spend a lot of time on it, and the way it's engineered technologically is it feeds you where you've been before. Mm -hmm. What you've seen before, what you bought before, that'll be in your feed. And that'll, that's what's going to keep showing up in your social media. And somebody else's is going to be different. It's a real uh, kind of a little bit frightening enactment of this what you see is what you get thing. You're not going to see new things or new points of view or new uh, ideas. You're going to see what you saw before. And what you know, what you read before, you're gonna, and, and the feed is going to keep coming up and bringing you that. So you're sort of living in a bubble. It made me think of the um, like hermetically sealed, sealed kind of bubbles for people with allergies. You know what I'm talking about? And it's very. This is your controlled world you're in. That's the. That's what we don't want. That's what will keep us stuck in a only seeing what you've seen before kind of place. Um, no new possibilities, no new ideas about who you are or what's possible for you, but old ones. Old ones we, we don't want to be stuck with. We want to stay open. Uh, there's so many wonders out there uh, for each one of us. 
And the third one, and maybe the most important, is I think we have to keep kind of priming our imagination. Because uh, I think our imagination gets a little sluggish, especially sometimes as we get older. There's a tendency to, to, to stop imagining as many possibilities as, as there are. We have to kind of stretch our, our powers to see beyond what we can see now, to consider some new possibilities that maybe we haven't considered at all. Think of ourselves in new ways. Um, and we can do, we can learn to do that. We can, we can stretch our vision of, our, of ourselves and our lives. Um, in bird watching, Joe and I both love bird watching, we keep a lot of feeders, and that was a big you know, focus for us down at Sandoval because they have so many wonderful birds. But in bird watching, over the years, I've tried to stretch my vision by buying bird books, birding guides, uh, identification guides, I've been on Audubon field trips, uh, things like that, that prime the imagination, give me more idea of what to look for. I didn't even know what to look for uh, until I started looking at what are the possibilities and imagining them and reading about them and looking at images. I think we can do this in our lives too, can't we? Look at images, look at others and models and mentors and, and read and take classes and uh, paint. And you know, creative expression is a wonderful way of kind of opening up to see some new ways and some new possibilities. Um, I had a friend of mine uh, recently told me, she said, you know, my love of birds and so on, she said, she said, I think I know three birds. <laughs> so I gave her a bird book. <laughs> There's so many more birds than that out there, so many. But you know, that's just one little area. In every area of life, there's, you know, people will talk to me who are good with like finance and, and uh, numbers and so on, and I just sort of glaze over. I know about three numbers, you know? <laughs> But other people, it's, it's fascinating. Uh, the guy we go to for financial advice, he's fascinated by numbers, fascinated by rise and falls of stocks and bonds and you know, uh, economic waves and trends so that we just gloss over. We, we don't get it at all. Um, <clears throat> there's so much more to know and to learn, so many more uh, discoveries out there than we can imagine. So we have to kind of keep stretching ourselves and oh my goodness, it's so important with children to keep giving children, uh, priming the imagination, giving them images and ideas about who they are and what they could do, where they could go, and who they could be. Um, <clears throat> I stumbled on a, a, a little a video that was done uh, at the Sydney Opera House. It was a video um, in celebration of a women's festival last year, all about women. This was in January of 2017. And uh, it was a video called Seeing is Believing. I'm very much aligned with what I was thinking about here. If we can believe in something, we'll see it. We're more likely to see it. Um, and, and the more we see, the more we believe. Um, they did this uh, video with uh, little girls. Uh, I think these girls were about maybe 10 years old or something. And they were asking them about their future, what they wanted to do, and, and um, and what came out was evident, and it was that there were certain things that, like, they one of them wanted to be a doctor, but she also loved helicopters and wanted to be a helicopter pilot. And uh, but she didn't think girls did that kind of thing. Um, and of course, as a woman, we then go, oh, <laughs> to see that. And then there was a girl that she wanted to write, and there's another little girl who loved fish and water, and um, and they couldn't see themselves doing things like that, what became apparent in the video. Well, then they, they link these girls up with uh, mentors. Uh, one girl, she gets linked up with a marine biologist who works at uh, um, some kind of a marine biology site and oversees the care of all these fish. Um, and a, another little girl has a one-on-one -on -one with a, uh, a helicopter doctor who goes into trauma areas and, uh, and helps heal people. and, and uh, and another one meets uh, a little girl who'd like to write, met up with a successful woman writer and author, and, and read some of her material to her. And there was just this dynamic thing going on in the video. It was like <coughs> doors opening, doors of possibility opening. Uh, I think you could all imagine that as, as a little kid. If you met somebody doing something you aspire to, and it's like, this is possible for you, now you can see it. Look at this image uh, look of this person doing this exciting work who is a little girl just like you or a little boy just like you. 
then you can believe it more. Then you can believe it. Seeing is believing. And what you can see is what you can get. But we have to be able to see. We have to keep being able to see, keep opening our eyes and imagining possibilities. Uh, so important. And we, we see examples of it all the time uh, in people's lives, all kinds of people's lives. That was when I saw that uh, Seeing is Believing video from the Sydney Opera House, I thought about a story Eddie Watkins Jr. told when he was here. Um, if any of you don't know him, he's a pretty successful musician. We had visited a number of times. Um, uh, came out of Detroit. He was a Motown player uh, for years. He, uh, um, toured with the Temptations on the bass, starting at like 17, 18 years old. Um, he didn't. Uh, he was introduced to the piano first uh, at age seven, uh, growing up in Detroit. It was a gift from his grandmother, uh, but he was like you know kind of compelled to take piano lessons, like so many kids. Uh, didn't do anything for him. Then he was introduced to the bass, the bass guitar, when he was 13, and he really liked that. But it didn't really kick into gear until he he got some images of it. The imagination got primed. Uh, he had a junior high school teacher that took his class uh, on a field trip to a Motown review. And from backstage, they got to see uh, Gladys Knight and the Pips, and Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye and uh, Smokey and the Miracles and The Temptations and everything changed. He saw this possibility and he saw himself as a musician. He saw himself in a whole new way um, and started carrying the bass to and from school before he could even play it. I would love that story, just like I'm a bass player. And, uh, <laughs> just carried it around. The new sense of self was strong. Uh, that's that's exciting. Really open to a uh, new sense of self. Can we do that all the time? Can you see yourself in a new way? Maybe you're uh, maybe an artist. Maybe you're an artist. Maybe you're a musician. Uh, maybe there's a new self kind of emerging in you in some way um, that um, you're just getting some glimpses of. It's something we can help each other see better in, in, in the opportunities we present to one another. Just like that. Thank God for that junior high school teacher. We might not have gotten Eddie Watkins Jr. coming through and making all this fabulous music and lifting our spirits. Um, it's wonderful when, when you know, we can kind of prime each other's imagination a little bit and, uh, and, and do it for ourselves as well. And it's not just about vocation. Uh, it's at any time in life, because this is the activity of God in us, that, that creative energy that is with us always, at every stage of life. It isn't just about finding the right job in life. It's about bringing us greater joy and fulfillment and happiness and peace at all stages of life. I was remembering uh, having just been down to Sanibel, and we learned uh, some about the wonderful sea turtles that come up and nest on the beaches, too. Uh, we didn't see any of that, but. Uh, some years back, um, I went to Hold Beach in uh, uh, Carolina Coast, and they have a lot of the, the huge sea turtles that nest along those beaches, and I got to see a hatching of a nest, and the little tiny little things coming out of that nest and heading right into the water. It's pretty amazing. Have any of you, have any of you seen that? No, it's just a kind of an amazing sight. And these big, huge sea turtles, they, they come to shore, they, they uh, have their little, their, uh, your nest there, they put the eggs in there, and go back out, and then they hatch. Uh, but I happened to meet a woman that year uh, who had, she was a widow and a retiree, and she'd recently moved to Hold Beach, and uh, took a great interest in the endangered sea turtles, and joined this volunteer group uh, that was forming on the island to go up and down the beaches, watch for activity that a nest has been created, and then they kind of mark it off to kind of protect it, and then they monitor it all the time, and when it's ready to hatch, they, they gather some volunteers, and they kind of oversee that and help them out into the water, just like making a clear path, and uh, it changed her life. It became this whole new passion for her, and uh, a whole new set of friends, uh, the daily activities that she was very invested in and excited about. That's, you know, that's, that's the activity of God, wanting to, wanting to uh, keep bringing us 
more ventures in life, more opportunities so that we can be happier and more fulfilled at any point in our lives. Uh, and in all of our lives, all of us right here, right now, that's the activity of God in us. Um, and if there's a restlessness or a need for a greater fulfillment or purpose, uh, God is guiding us in that. Ideas will pop, opportunities will arise, invitations will come, um, and our challenge is to be able to see them, is to be able to see them, because what we can see uh, has a whole lot to do with what we can experience in life. So we need to keep our vision wide open and unblocked, and we need to be very receptive and consider all kinds of wild possibilities because there are manatees in the water. <laughs> These big, huge, thousand-pound creatures are swimming in there, and there are anhingas doing acrobats in the air and they're tossing fish around us, and there are these incredibly pink birds called rosy and spoonbills, and there are so many possibilities for our lives and what we can experience if we're open to them and, and ready to see them. So I am ready to see amazing things. Let's affirm that. I am I'm ready to see, see amazing things. things. Let's take that into prayer for a moment and affirm that again within. I am wide open and unblocked and ready to see extraordinary things. I'm, I'm open to doing new things and trying new things and to becoming new in all kinds of different ways, and I see that for each one in this room this morning. There are no limits for any of us. God in us is a source of great power and energy, and we are one with it, and it is always guiding us in the path of life. We are never stuck. We are always being guided toward greater possibilities, new ways of unfolding the limitless potential within us limitless ways of experiencing more joy and peace and fulfillment. So we are open to that and ready to receive it, and we are grateful for God's unfailing power and presence with us. And so it is. Amen.